remember that you are deserving of beautiful things. Even if you don't see it, even if you don't believe it, you are. If you don't believe it, you should believe me, because I don't lie. <laughs> Hello, 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 classmates. Welcome back to another episode of What School Didn't Teach Me. It's your host, Jasmine Kiamber, and class is in session. And before we get started, before I say anything else, let me just say, if no one has told you, you are worthy. If no one has told you, the world is yours. Despite what anyone has told you, you are worthy of love, of good things, of acceptance, of belonging, of protection, of security, of blessings. You are worthy. And so if you haven't caught on by now, today's episode is called In Case No One Has Told You. And it's really based on the things that I kind of learned in my transition to adulthood that would have made my transition a lot easier if these were things that I was accepting of at the beginning of this transition. So basically, I'm taking this episode as a chance or as an opportunity to reaffirm you. And while I doubt that you need my validation for anything, because the only validation you should be looking for is your own, it's my opportunity or I'm taking this as an opportunity to validate you, to validate your progress, your growth, your journey. So buckle your seatbelt. I know we in the classroom, but uh, buckle your seatbelt. And I'm ready to just throw out affirmation after affirmation after affirmation. And I want y'all to be in the space to receive it. So if your mind was closed before, please open it. Keep your mind open, keep your ears open, keep your heart open. Because if you stumbled upon this episode, then you are exactly where you need to be. It means that somewhere in this list of notes, you needed to hear at least one thing that I have to say. And, you know, I tell y'all all the time, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a teacher. I am not the teacher of this classroom. I am a student, just like y'all. I'm sitting in the back with y'all. I'm probably sitting in the back with chips in my hand because that's just the type of student that I was. <laughs> but if I can share anything or if I can be a vessel or anything that could be of any kind of importance to anybody, then that's just what I'm gonna do. So let's hop right into it. In case nobody told you, it's okay to change. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to change your behavior. It's okay for your body to change. It's okay for you to change your friendships. It's okay for you to change your boundaries. It's okay for you to change. We are not meant to come into this world and stay stagnant. Who you were at birth is not who you were when you were seven years old. You needed something different at 14 than you needed at seven. And at 16, you may need something different than when you were 14. You may need friends who support you differently. You may need people around you who talk to you differently. You may have been okay with people talking to you some kind of way when you were 17, but maybe at 20, you want people to talk to you differently. That's okay. That's completely fine. And it's okay for you to let that be known and for you to make the necessary adjustments so that you can get what you need out of this life. Whether that be setting certain boundaries with the people you love to keep them in your life, whether that be to remove certain people out of your life because they don't align with the journey that you're on, whether that's changing your own behavior so that what you're doing aligns with the dreams that you have, we don't stay the same forever. The key to this life is to find your fit and to let go of anything that doesn't fit you anymore. And that includes clothes. <laughs> me personally, I've been going through a lot of body changes lately. And I won't even say a lot. I think for me, it's been a lot of changes in accepting my body as it changes. My body looks different from when I first came to college. I have to have a different level of acceptance for my body. You know, I may need to go a size up in some areas. Actually, y'all, I try to go a size up in jeans and let's just say I hate jeans now. <laughs> but it's okay for your body to change. 
Nobody ever told me about the second puberty that we would have to go through at 20. Okay. I, <laughs> I thought that what time did what time did I stop growing for real? I think I stopped growing for real. I don't know. Because I feel like I was done growing around middle school. But we're gonna give it 16. We're gonna say your girl stopped growing at 16. Cause that's what I hear. I hear girls stop growing at 16 and I think boys stop growing at 21. Is that is that it or am I mixing it up? Somebody let me know. But nobody tells us about the second puberty that you enter, you know, like as you get older, like the puberty doesn't necessarily stop in your teen years. You go through a whole, whole second set and nobody tells you or prepares you for that. That's okay. You're still beautiful. You're still handsome. You still look good. You're just going through changes. And now you need to make the necessary adjustments to adapt to your changes. And that looks different for everybody. Whether what you decide to do is to buy new clothes so that the clothes that you have now fits your style a little more. Or you decide to go to the gym to reshape the new body that you have. Both of those options are okay. As long as you are accepting and loving your body for where you are. As long as you are accepting and loving yourself for where you are. It's okay to change. It's okay to change. We're supposed to give ourselves the space and the freedom to change. That's what change is. Change is freedom. Freedom is having change and stability in the same space. So for life to continue to change and for you to continue to accept the blessings and the challenges that come your way, but also maintaining mental stability and peace through any obstacle, through any adversity, through any challenge, through any change that comes your way. I don't know if I said this already, but it's also okay to change your priorities. And that, that's a real one. Like, at one point in my life, other people's perception of me was my priority. I may not have seen it like that, but that was just the truth. I cared a lot more about what other people thought. People that were close to me, let me be clear. Not just anybody, but people that were close to me. I cared more about their idea of me than my own values, my own boundaries, and my own desires, wishes, and goals. And as I continue to grow older, that started to shift for me. I started to put more value and more weight on my goals and my values and my wishes. And I started to resent other people's expectations of me, other people's priorities to make room for mine to be at the top. That's okay. People may hate you for it. People may get mad at you for it. People may try to cross your boundaries. That's their problem not yours. Give yourself the validation, the reassurance, the affirmation to grow. And anyone who can't grow with you, they could kick rocks. That's been my favorite thing to say lately. <laughs> they could kick rocks. It's true. It's true. In this life, we should only have people around us who can stand by us as we grow. As we rise, as we fall, as we laugh, as we cry, as we change, it's okay to change. In case nobody told you, it's okay to be proud. It's okay to be proud of yourself. It's okay to be proud of yourself for making your bed this morning. It's okay to be proud of yourself for doing the laundry today or this week. It's okay to be proud of yourself for eating today. One meal, two meals, it's okay. Be proud of yourself. Pat yourself on the back. It's okay to be proud of yourself for going out today, for going out and having fun, for speaking up for yourself, for reaching out for help when you need it. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself. Those may seem like very small things, but they're not. In the grand scheme of growth, in the grand scheme of progress, it's these small steps that take us where we feel like we need to be to thrive. 
this was really put to the test for me last year. 2022. 2022 was a difficult year for me because I was just stressed. I was struggling with individuality. I was still trying to find myself and figure out what I liked and what I didn't like. And at the same time, I was putting somebody else's needs and priorities, not somebody else's, other people's needs and priorities over my own boundaries. And so of course, inevitably, that caused me to go through some emotional depletion, right? And I had seen on social media what to do in moments like that, but I had not put it in practice. And so last year I found myself seeping into some old ways, you know, in the last episode, oh, oh, I meant to ask, I meant to ask at the beginning of the episode, did y'all enjoy last week's episode, Mind, Body, and Soul? I hope you did. If you haven't listened to it yet, please go back and like listen to it. Once we're done with our affirmation session over here, okay, I want you to go listen to Mind, Body, and Soul because we had our very first guest, V from the Venusian Vault in the classroom and she schooled us, y'all. She schooled us. So best believe she will be back. But I mentioned it in, the, in our last episode that growing up, if I had a problem, I would isolate. If I had a problem, I would keep my mouth closed. Not because somebody told me to do that. Not because I grew up with people not caring about my emotions, but that's just how I, that's, I don't know, y'all. I don't know, y'all. I just became a master of isolation. But I remember seeing a long time ago that a lot of times our love language and our self-sabotage mechanism or our coping mechanism correlate or they are inverted versions of themselves so one way that i like to fill my cup is by being around the people that i love in turn when i don't feel good when i feel emotionally depleted or depressed or anxious i isolate on a day-to-day -day basis my love language is physical touch physical touch, quality time, and acts of service. When I am anxious, I don't like people touching me. Like I, I remember I was anxious sometime recently, like sometime last month. I was anxious, I was running around and I was literally about to blow up. And a friend of mine tried to hold my hand and I literally swatted his hand away. And I did it without even thinking about it. And I mean, I, I apologize because like wow whoa but that's that was how i responded that was my self-sabotaging coping mechanism that's how i responded to him trying to affirm me okay back to the story 2022 i was i felt very emotionally depleted and in the past that would result in me isolating myself and so i found myself a lot of times last year i would just be in the room like i literally would be in the room all day laying in my bed, watching TV. I might go to Kearney and get some food and be right back in my room, but I was in my room. Like, my friends weren't seeing me until maybe in the late, late evening when I would be like, okay, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to get out of my house. I'm ready to stop being by myself because from what I've seen on social media, from what I've seen on all the mental health pages that I follow, we should be challenging our coping mechanisms. So instead of isolating myself, I'm going to call my friends up and I'm gonna ask them if we can have a game night. Or I'm gonna see what one of my friends are doing and you know we'll have a steady date. Or I'll see if one of my friends are free and I'll give them a call. Even if, you know, me and my friend, we might both live on campus. You know, I might not wanna leave my room, but I'll give her a call. And yes, she's less than a mile away from me, but I'll do what I can to get what I need in that moment. And those were moments that I had to stop and be proud of myself. Be proud of myself for getting what I need in that moment. Growing up, I didn't know how to do that. I only knew how to move through my accomplishments. And I think for a lot of us, you know, I'm quick to blame hustle culture. <laughs> 
I'm quick to blame hustle culture, but I think for a lot of us, we were taught like, okay, you did it, now what's next? And that was just our lives. You did it, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? We're always looking for what's next and we never stop to congratulate ourselves or to pat ourselves on the back or to take a deep breath to celebrate yourself and to be proud of your small accomplishments. Small, large, to be proud of them. I didn't know how to be proud of myself when I was younger. I didn't know how to be proud of myself until maybe last year for very, very, very small things. It took me hitting a very low point and climbing my way out of that hole for me to learn how to be proud of myself. And I don't want y'all to hit rock bottom. I don't want y'all to hit a hole so that you can learn how to do it. As a vessel, okay, I go through certain things so that I can come and tell y'all how to be better, okay? Be better, okay? Don't wait until you're in a really sad place to start congratulating yourself, being proud of yourself, giving yourself the love and affirmation that you deserve. No, do it right now. Right now. Do it right now. Remember that you are deserving of beautiful things. Even if you don't see it, even if you don't believe it, you are. If you don't believe it, you should believe me because I don't lie. <laughs> I don't. We keep it very open, honest, and transparent in the classroom, and I don't like to lie. So, me, Jasmine Kiamber, raising my hand to tell you that you are deserving of all the beautiful things, of all the blessings, of supportive families, of supportive friends, of loving people, of compliments, of accomplishments, and of praise. You are deserving. In case nobody told you, don't underestimate the power of time, trust, and progression, okay? I always say that progress doesn't happen in a day, so it's definitely not your first time hearing this, but do not underestimate the power of time, trust, and progression. No matter what you're going through, no matter what kind of journey you're on, whether it's a journey of self-growth, self-love, self-discovery, self-acknowledgement, whether you are working through some type of grievance, there is always another side. I mentioned this in the last episode or in one of the last episodes, how my mom would tell me nothing is the end of the world. My mom had to drill that into my head. And I think her telling me that so often is what allows me to have so much peace when things go on in my life because I can trust the fact that no matter what happens in this life, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and whatever I'm going through, whatever situation is happening is not going to kill me. It's not going to shatter my world. It's not going to harm me. There are other things out there for me. Even if things don't go my way, there's something better out there for me. So no matter what you're going through, there's always another side. Sometimes we can get so caught up in the darkness that's happening around us that we don't even see the other side, but know it's there. Even if you don't see it, know it's there. That's where faith comes in. Like, we not gonna preach today, but that's where faith comes in. I had a conversation with a friend yesterday about blind faith and how scary it can be. Faith is truly something that you just have to believe. You cannot see it, you cannot touch it, you just have to continue to move through it until you see the other side. So to my people who are in darkness, or to my people who are going through trials and tribulations, know that there is light on the other side. And all you have to do is trust the process. Give yourself time, give yourself grace, make mistakes and learn from them, walk through them, and trust the process. And I wanted to add on to that segment by giving this tidbit. If you live in the moment, you'll never miss it. When I first got to my HBCU, I knew I wasn't staying for the entire four years. So those who know me know that I am graduating in three years instead of four. And so I, in my second year, I was so emotional and I was so anxious about my last year, because this year is my last year, because I was scared that I was going to forget what my school looked like. 
I was scared that I was going to run through my semesters and rush my time here that I was going to forget what the school looked like. I was going to forget what my time was like. I was going to forget what New Orleans was like. I wasn't going to be able to have stories to tell my children or my grandchildren because I wasn't going to remember what my youth was like. And I had to remind myself, if you live in the moment, you'll never miss it. You won't. You won't. Sometimes we can get so caught up in the future. And what's next? Come on with the hustle culture. We can get so caught up in what's next that we're not paying attention to what's now. Now, every time I walk the oaks, because that's what we call our, our, our yard. Every time I walk the oaks, I embrace it. I walk slow. I take a deep breath. I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care if I have a meeting at 12 and it's 12.05. I'm about to embrace the environment around me because one day I won't be here anymore. And I want to be able to describe my past as it is now my present because I'll never get this time back. So in case nobody told you, it's okay to embrace your present. Stop thinking so hard about the future. Stop rushing to think about what's next and embrace what's in front of you. Embrace and enjoy what you have in front of you now. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Live in it. Bask in it. Embrace every minor detail. Enjoy it. Because if you live in the moment, you'll never miss it. I can't lie. I do still have the fear that I won't get to remember it like I want to, just just because of how my memory works. And so as a result, I walk around taking videos of the oaks. <laughs> I take videos of my beautiful surroundings. I have videos from high school when I used to walk to the bus stop and the sky used to look too good. I just will pull on my phone and record. And now, two, three years later, I go back and look at those videos and I can remember myself being there because I got a chance to embrace my present. So in case nobody told you, if you live in the moment, you'll never miss it. Don't be too caught up in what you don't have and what you're missing and what you need and what's next that you're not enjoying and embracing what's in front of you. And last but not least, in case nobody told you, the world is yours. I don't know about you, but I plan to do more than one thing in this life. I'm a firm believer that we are multifaceted beings. There is no one thing that you're good at. If people have told you that you're good at one thing all your life, and so now you think you're only good at one thing, I want you to stop and find other things that you enjoy doing and see how good you are at those things based off of pure passion. We don't have to be one thing in this world. I, all right, I'm gonna, lay, I'm gonna lay it out real quick. I am a future family law and child advocacy attorney, which means that I've learned a lot about legalities, the legal profession, how to make an oral argument, how to make a direct and cross, and you know, I'm fairly good at it, but I'm also a poet. I'm also a singer. I'm also future owner of a mental health clinic. And I don't plan to let go of any of those titles when I become a family law and child advocacy attorney. Why? Because I am a multifaceted being who is good at so many things. And the world is mine. So I don't have to let go of anything if I don't want to. And, you know, I'm an only child. If that hasn't been established, if I haven't talked about that already, I'm an only child. So I grew up, I didn't grow up spoiled because I'm not spoiled. I'm not a spoiled brat. But I did grow up believing that I could have anything that I wanted. And I don't have to exhaust that. I don't have to manipulate anybody for that. I don't have to scream and cry to get what I want. No. If nobody else is going to get it for me, I'm going to get it for myself. And I truly think that me growing up with, with that mentality, with the mentality that there's nothing in this world that I can't have, inspires me to believe that there's nothing in this world that I have to give up to, to be successful. And that doesn't mean that I don't have to make sacrifices. And that doesn't mean that things won't come and go in my life. It just means that I don't have to be one thing in this world. Our 
parents and grandparents and great grandparents didn't have the luxury of working a nine to five and then still being a musician and fully pursuing both of those things. We have that luxury. We have the luxury, we have the tools, and we have the ability and capability to embrace all the different sides of us. If you don't wanna be a journalist today and you wanna be a painter today, that's who you are. If you don't wanna be an educator today, but you wanna serve children today, that's who you are. Make space for the multiple different sides of you. And please, 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 please don't ever let this world take that away from you. Don't let life and circumstances and trials and tribulations discourage you from the point where you put yourself in a place of lack. Like you don't have the space, the time, the facilities to be whoever you want to be at any given moment. I might have needed that just as much as y'all. Hopefully y'all needed that just as much as I did. It can be hard to receive things when we don't believe them. And if you are in a space where you feel like you don't believe or deserve these things, as a girl who's made it to the other side of the rainbow, yes, you do. And if, and if you just listen to this whole episode and you still feel like you don't deserve to believe these things about yourself, restart the episode over and I'm not kidding and I'm not and I'm not kidding listen to the whole thing over with an open mind because at the beginning of the episode I told you to keep your mind and your heart and your ears open you are deserving you are deserving you are worthy you are multifaceted you are ever changing and ever growing and it's okay to be all of those things and it's okay to embrace all of those things. And it's okay to be proud of all of those things. And it's okay to not let some of those things go. We should be able to hold every part of ourselves that exists. We should be able to make space for those pieces of ourselves. We don't always have to have this immense modesty. We don't always have to put ourselves down to lift other people up. No, have pride. Have pride in who you are and the value that you bring to this world. Know that you bring value to this world. If you've ever doubted it, this is my chance to reaffirm you. You bring light and value into this world. And don't let it go. Don't let it go because you never know who you're impacting. And you never know who your light is shining on. So, I hope this helped. I hope this affirmed you. I hope this validated you. I hope this relieved you in some way. And in case somebody told you, you are loved and you are worthy. And I'll see y'all next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Remember, this is meant to be a conversation. So as much as I talk to you, I would love for y'all to talk back to me. Message us on Instagram and Twitter at WSDTM pod or send us an email at what school didn't teach me at gmail.com. Better yet, send this episode to a friend and start the conversation there and let's see what we can learn from each other. If you like what you hear, go ahead and subscribe and give us a five star rating on whatever platform you're listening on. Trust me, it matters. Oh, there goes the bell. I can't wait to hear from y'all and I'll see you next week.